Welcome to our lecture online and now let's go ahead and try to graph a binomial uh, distribution and so what we have here in our example we have uh, n trials and the probability of success is 0.5 and we want to know what the results are for successes going anywhere from 0 to 8 and so there's two different ways in which we can do that but what I've decided to do here is use the general case and then on the next video I will show you the special case um, not really a special case, but I'll show you a shortcut method by, no, by using binomial expansion. You'll see in just a little bit. But here's the general equation. The probability of, of uh, m success is equal to this equation right here. I already went ahead and wrote the simplest form. And so we're going to try probability of zero successes, one success, two successes, three successes, and so forth. So in each case, n is equal to 8 because there's 8 trials. So we have 8 factorial in the numerator. In this case, we have 0 factorial and 8 minus 0, which is 8 factorial. Of course, 8 divided by 8 is 1, and 0 factorial, by definition, is equal to 1. So this whole thing becomes 1, and this simply becomes 0 0.5 to the 8 power, which is 0 0.0039. So we do this again for the probability of 1 success, and so that would be 8 factorial divided by 1 factorial divided by 7 factorial times this quantity right here. Notice how the exponents go from 0 to 1 to 2 to 3, and then the exponent here goes from 8 to 7 to 6 to 5 and so forth. So you can see the pattern already. And so the numbers then subsequently get bigger and bigger and bigger until we reach a maximum value for the probability of 4. Then when you get to the probability of 5, then the number again becomes what you have on this side. You can then see this perfect symmetry. The reason why there's this perfect symmetry on both sides of the maximum value is because both P and Q have the same value. In other words, the probability of of success and the probability of failure is equal to each other, 0.5 in each case, and therefore you'll have a perfectly symmetric uh, distribution for your binomial graph. And then of course you continue on like that and you can already predict what these numbers are going to be. They're going to be the same as the numbers over there. So let's go ahead and graph that. The horizontal axis is the number of successes m, the vertical axis is the probability of occurrence. So here on the first one it's 0 0.0039. So that would be a very, very tiny number. 0.1 is here, so that would be just a tiny little number down here somewhere. For 1, that's the probability of 0 0.03. That's still a very tiny number. For 2, that's 0 0.1. That would be, well, actually, let's see here. 0.1, this is actually a little bit more. Let's make it a little bit bigger. Like so 0 0.109, that would be right here. 3, that would be 0 0.2188. And 4, that would be 0.27, which is right about there. And then we have a step down again for 5, for 6, for 7, and for 8. There you go. And let me get out of your way so you can see what I just did. So that is the probability for each of the successes from 0 to 1 to 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, and 8. Again, the heights of these, when you add them all up, that of course should add up to 1 because the probability of all of them occurring would of course together would be equal to 1. That's a total probability case. Now, so here you can see that because P and Q are the same, let me just write this, so Q therefore also is 0 0.5. If these two are the same, you're going to have a nice symmetric distribution. The maximum value will be at the center and whether or not there's one value that's a maximum or two values are maximum will depend, of course, on how many trials there are. And if there's an even number of trials, then you'll have two maximum values. If there's an odd number of trials, you have a single maximum value in the center. And so that's how we do that. So here's a nice example of how we use this general equation to calculate the probability in each case. You can see how the numbers change. And so this is kind of nice to look at to get a feel of how the equation changes for finding the different probabilities like that. And then we don't have to go all the way down here because then we know that the numbers begin to repeat on either side of the maximum value. And that's how we do that. Now let me show you one more thing. Um, no, I'm going to do that in a different video. So let me show you another video on how to use the binomial expansion to come up with a binomial distribution for this particular example. So stay tuned and I'll show you how to use a neat little trick on how to do that in the other method.